Hello students, let us continue the discussion. Uh, today we are going to discuss the motion of a charged particle in the in the region where we have both electric and magnetic field or we can say the combined magnetic and electric fields. Yeah, we have already discussed about it uh, and obtained the expression for it, right? So, which is Lorentz force, right? You just remember Lorentz force. Lorentz force is the force experienced by a charged particle moving in, in a region with both magnetic field and electric field, right? So, now it is the same situation which is considered again, but with a special uh, uh, condition with the, with the situation, okay? Now, uh, so the discussion is about uh, motion of charged particle in combined electric and magnetic fields right so now you see what's happening here uh, let me take the same kind of example so here we have a north pole of the magnet and here south pole and hence the field lines will be like this so here is a ready magnetic field set and if i keep a positively charged plate here and a negatively charged plate here so, here there will be electric field set. So, this is the region where we have both electric field, uh, both magnetic field and electric field, right. So, both of them will apply the force on a charge which is moving in this region, right. If a charge tries to move in this region, that charge will experience force due to both the fields. Now, this is the general situation and we have obtained the expression for the force experienced by this charged particle which is called Lorentz force and the expression was given by F is equal to Q of E vector E plus vector V cross vector B where V is the velocity of the particle and B is the magnetic field, E is the electric field, Q is the charge of the particle, right. This is the expression for Lorentz force and this force itself is the force experienced by this charged particle in the presence of both electric and magnetic fields. So, now this is known to us, okay. And now we are going to define uh, some a, a new term which is called crossed fields, okay. What is crossed fields? If the magnetic field and the electric field in a region are perpendicular to each other, then the field is called crossed fields okay so here they are not perpendicular electric field is like this magnetic field is like this yes there is certain angle between them but not perpendicular now i want to make this uh, condition uh, i want to make this kind of arrangement so that the electric field becomes perpendicular to the magnetic field and then the kind of field that is set is called crossed fields clear with crossed fields very easy the, if a region has both elect, uh, electric field and magnetic field perpendicular to each other, then the region is said to have crossed fields, okay. Right. Let me redraw it to make the arrangement into crossed fields, okay. Right. Now observe, this is the region of a certain magnetic field set like this and now I have placed positive charge plate exactly beneath uh, the arrangement. and negatively charged plate here. Now, how do you expect the electric field to be? The electric field is expected to be like this, right? Okay. So, this region, now this region is said to have cross fields, okay. So, if I take one particular field line and the, from electric field and one particular field line from magnetic field and redraw them here, that will look somewhat like this, okay. Let this be the electric field, um, okay fine, Let, okay I, I just want to take the same arrangement as of the given reference, okay. Uh, let me uh, take the same kind of arrangement because this will give me electric field like this, magnetic field like this, but uh, electric field in the reference is here and the magnetic field is taken like this, okay. 
that is fine out of the board uh, we can get it because there is a reason for that ok. So, let me take the magnetic field out of the board like this ok. So, I will represent it like this. So, this is magnetic field ok. This is an electric field uh, this is the line representing electric field and this vector is representing magnetic field and these two are perpendicular to each other ok. So, this is cross field again ok. Even there they are perpendicular this is not the regular diagram this is just to show you how the cross fields look like this is the actual diagram of cross fields uh, simply representing them. Now what happens if a charged particle move with certain velocity in this cross field ok in such a way that ok the electric the, the motion of the charged particle in this field would be in such a way that the velocities of the velocity of the particle will be perpendicular to both electric field and magnetic field ok. If we have the velocity of the particle perpendicular to both electric field and magnetic field which means like this ok. If this is the direction of velocity of the particle ok somewhat like x axis, y axis and z axis ok all of them are perpendicular to each other now right. So, in this situation what do you expect to happen with the charged particle ok. So, uh, this is again the this is this kind of uh, arrangement and uh, motion of the charged particle is already discussed with this and we have obtained the expression in one of the special case where uh, V, E and B all of them are perpendicular to each other. We have already considered this and discussed in the previous class. But here there is a uh, there is here it is about more more kind of uh, physical approach ok. Let me explain what happens. So, now what you have here is theta ok what is theta? Theta is the angle between V cross B right. So, theta given by 90 degree right ok. And what about the direction of magnetic force here ok. Here you have positive charge situated and, and not situated it is moving, but it is the uh, it is the fr frozen frame that we have chosen ok. Now, come for V cross B, V cross B, V cross B is downwards. So, this is the direction of magnetic force which I can call F m ok. And this is the positive charge and the electric field is upwards and hence this itself is the direction of electric force ok which I can call F E, we know this right. And now F E and F M are exactly opposite ok. For this particular situation we, we have already derived the expression for the Lorentz force uh, or the net force experienced. What is F net equal to? F net equal to uh, electric force ok, magnitude of electric force minus magnitude of magnetic force right like this minus like this because forces are opposite. Now, what is the magnitude of electric force? Magnitude of electric force is E q right minus F m. What is the magnitude of magnetic force? Magnetic force is v q of V cross B right q of V cross B uh, theta is sin theta as theta is 90 degree uh, q V B sin theta is the magnitude right theta is 90 and hence it is simply q of uh, V B right magnitude of mag uh, mag magnetic force. Taking Q as the common factor we are left with Q of E minus V B right. This is the net force, this is the magnitude of net force acting on this charged particle. Now, we just assume the situations as such. See out of these two we have two forces acting and this is the original path of the body charged particle. If electric force dominates over magnetic force ok, if electric force dominates over magnetic force then the path of this charged particle is expected to go like this is not it? Yes, because magnetic force is less compared to electric force and hence it has its velocity along with the horizontal velocity it experiences an upward push because electric force is dominating and this will be the path when 
magnitude of electric force is greater than magnitude of magnetic force. Okay. Now, what if the magnetic force itself is greater? Okay. If the magnitude of ma mag mag magnetic force is greater than the ma magnitude of electric force, then the path traced will be like this, right? That this is how the charge is pushed down because magnetic force dominates and hence it is pushed down like this. So, this is the situation when we have magnetic force greater than electric force. Okay. So, these are the two paths traced in two different situations. And now, the question that comes is, what if both electric force and magnetic force on the charged particle are equal? Okay. Which means, when F e becomes equal to F m in magnitude, what is F net? F net is 0, right? So, when F e electric force on the charged particle becomes equal to magnetic force on the charged particle, then the net force experienced by the charged particle is 0, which means the particle is neither pulled down nor pushed up, but it will remain in its original path with the velocity v like this, is not it? That is very easy to understand. If f e becomes greater than f m, it will take this path. If f m becomes greater than f e, it will take this path. If f e is equal to f m, then the particle will remain in its path without any deviation or without any deflection, right. So, when the f e becomes equal to f m, the particle will not experience will not experience any deflection, right? That is it, very easy. So, when the particle, uh, when the electric force on the particle becomes equal to magnetic force in the crossed fields, okay, in the crossed fields particularly, then the particle will not experience any deflection. Now, if we want to take a particle uh, if, if we want to make a particle move in the crossed fields without any deflection, then we need to make the electric force become equal to magnetic force, right. And now we will derive an expression for the values of E and B, okay. So, now what we are going to derive is the relation between uh, the, 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 the condition which we need to set prior, okay for to get a particle of certain velocity without deflection, okay. Yeah, let me start, you will get to know, nothing to worry, okay. This is a simple derivation now we are going to do for the velocity with which, okay. Because see now, let me explain here itself, F e should become equal to F m, right. Uh, here the factors which we cannot change are say electric field, magnetic field and charge, they are initially set, charge of particle, electric field, magnetic field, but I can change the velocity, okay. Now you assume I throw the body with less velocity, very less velocity, which means V is less and hence this factor QVB will be less compared to EQ, right. So for lesser velocities, for particles with lesser velocities, electric force is dominated and hence it will take this path, okay. So, this is when we have velocity, okay, or less velocity, right, is not it following? Now, if the velocity is too much, okay, it is going with high speed, then V will be greater and hence this term dominates over E q, right. When this term dominates over E q, magnetic force dominates. When the magnetic force dominates, the particle will be pushed down or pulled down, right? Because this is the condition, magnetic force is dominating. So, it will take this path for greater velocities or larger velocities, right? Following? But for a particular velocity, okay, for a particular velocity, the particle will trace 
the same path of its original direction for a particular velocity, isn't it? Because we cannot change E, B, Q, they are all fixed, but we can change V. So, for a particular velocity of a charged particle, the particle will not experience any deflection in the crossed fields. And that velocity is very important for us and we are going to uh, derive the expression for that velocity with which the body should be thrown into the cross fields so that it does not experience any deflection. Okay? So, now I will derive the expression for that particular velocity with, uh, with which the body should move, the particle should move so that it does not experience any deflection. Okay? Yeah, very easy derivation it is, uh, most part of the derivation is already done. Okay? So, the condition is net force should be 0, right? which means F e should be equal to F m. Right? What is F e? Magnitude. Okay? These are the values of magnitudes of force. So, a magnitude of electric force is E q right? and magnitude of magnetic force is uh, q v b sin theta, write it once and theta is 90 degree for crossed fields uh, for this particular case and hence E q is equal to q v b. Yeah, before this step you can start with for no deflection of charged particle okay, for no deflection of charged particle F net should be 0 and hence F e should be equal to F m and that is how you can start the derivation once you draw the diagram. Now, when theta is 90 degree E q is equal to q v b, q and q gets cancelled very simple we obtained the expression for velocity, velocity is equal to E by b that is it. So, if the velocity of the charged particle entering the crossed fields is equal to the ratio of electric field to the magnetic field, the particle will not experience any deflection in its paths. That is it, very simple derivation. Okay? Clear with this? So, this is the conceptual part of a particular velocity with which a body should be thrown into crossed fields so that it experience no deflection in its paths. Yeah, using the same principle here or the same physics, uh, we, we will now discuss uh, a simple device which is used to get charged particles of particular velocity out of a beam of particles with various velocities. Okay? Now, let me give you an example. Say I have, uh, okay, you might be uh, you might have the idea of basic nuclear reactions, you might have studied in chemistry also. We will discuss when it comes to nuclear chapter, but let me give you the basic idea. There are three kinds of nuclear reaction, alpha, beta, gamma. Okay? So, when it comes to alpha reactions, what we have is alpha particles coming out of the given source. Okay? So, if this is the source, okay, then alpha particles are emitted out of it. Now, all the alpha particles emitted out of the source will not have same velocity okay? because they are emitted with different kinetic energies and hence they will have different velocities. But I now need to conduct an experiment okay, where a particular velocity alpha particle has to be bombarded onto this target. Okay? That is how nuclear reactions are done. So, either alpha particle or a proton, how do we get the proton? You ionize an hydrogen, hydrogen atom, you take hydrogen atom and ionize it, you will get a proton, that is it. Okay? Either protons or uh, this kind of alpha particles are used normally in nuclear reactions. Okay? So, when all of, the, all of them are going in their path, now we need to select a, 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 the alpha particles of particular velocity not greater than that velocity, not lesser than that velocity. So, what do we do? There we will put the electric field and magnetic field. Okay? Once we set the electric field and magnetic field, uh, so that they are perpendicular to each other, which means crossed fields, then what happens? The charged particles, all of them will rush through this crossed field. Okay? But once they enter the crossed fields, 
those particles with higher velocity of expected expected velocity will be moving downwards and will go like this all the particles of lesser velocity of lesser which are lesser to the velocity of expected uh, velocity we bombard it to be bombarded here the greater one the greater velocity one will go like this right similar to this but the particles with the particular velocity will reach the target now say i need to get a particular velocity particle this time okay so how do we uh, how do we get this particular velocity uh, uh, this particular velocity particles we can uh, get the particles of this particular velocity by setting the values of e and b that's it okay electric field can be permanently set but the magnetic field can be varied magnetic fields that we produce in labs are generally the electromagnetic ele electromagnets one okay we make use of electromagnets to produce magnetic field so in such a situation uh, we can vary this magnetic field with the uh, amount of current that we give it to elect electromagnets so once we change the values of b and set the val value of v equal to e by b because this velocity we need it and hence we have to set the ratio of e by b equal to v so if i set the ratio of e by b equal to our required velocity we can get the beam of particles okay we uh, out of beam of particles with various velocities we can select a particular uh, particle with particular velocity that we need for the experiment okay and this device where we can select charged particles of particular velocity is called velocity selector okay so velocity selector is a device which is used to select charged particles of particular velocity for various reactions or to feed the accelerators okay yeah so this is about the application of this theory clear yeah, right okay the next uh, topic that we are going to take uh, is an interesting one very interesting one at the same time very high level physics uh, related one so this is a particle accelerator that we are going to discuss now what is a particle accelerator so now uh, the charged particle that we take now okay using any a source of uh, 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 nuclear reaction uh, nuclear decay uh, uh, alpha beta gamma okay we generally take alpha particles from nuclear reactions okay beta gamma we don't take okay so nothing to worry yeah we'll get to know okay you'll get to know uh, why we take only alpha for the reactions why not beta okay we'll get to know when it comes to nuclear chapter but for now uh, we'll take alpha particles we'll take uh, ions and we also take protons to accelerate okay so uh, which we have various types of particle accelerator what are particle accelerators accelerators basically particle accelerators are the machines which are used to accelerate the particles accelerate the okay particularly positively charged particles okay accelerate the positively charged particles to very high speeds very high speeds okay uh, they are somewhat like uh, close to the speed of light that is how fast we make the particles move in the particle accelerators uh, particle accelerators okay we, there are uh, various types of them but the basic types are uh, are 2 to 3 which i can take one is linear accelerator which is very easy to understand what we do is uh, you know that positive positive charges repel right right that is the condition or uh, that is the property that we will make use of okay there is a device which is called van der graaff generator okay which is which is there in the cell uh, which is removed from the syllabus actually last year what we'll do you just assume this much what we'll do is we'll will charge a body to with a huge charge deposited on it okay will take a spherical body and charge it charge it with, so that huge charge is deposited on it then what we'll do uh, we'll keep a channel here 
and will bring a positively charged body close to this okay close to this using certain mechanism and we will leave the particle we will just leave the particle so this is also positively charged and it is huge in quantity of charge this is also positively charged so both of them ripple with each other since they ripple with each other okay what is the quantity of force force is directly proportional to q1 q2 right so q1 is large and hence the force will also be large with that huge amount of force this particle starts to accelerate through this pipe and here somewhere we will keep the target and this particle comes through that and hits the target okay so this is this kind of uh, accelerators particle accelerators are called uh, linear accelerators because the particle is accelerated linearly okay this is actually not there in the syllabus just as a curiosity just for the curiosity sake i introduced you to this kind of one and the next kind of uh, accelerators we, and here the speed that we can obtain is not that efficient or not that uh, greater speed uh, so that it goes close to the speed of light no we can get less less lesser speed compared to the next accelerators so the next accelerator is a cyclotron okay which we will discuss now and we have one more which is called a synchro cyclotron or synchrotron okay yeah that is advanced one and we will not be discussing that okay yeah close to cyclotron itself okay but we first need to understand cyclotron completely and that is what is there in the syllabus okay this is not there this is linear accelerator which is not there in the syllabus just as the introduction and curiosity sake i explained it but now this velocity is not enough for us what we'll do we'll go for cyclotron to produce still more energetic particles or still more uh, the, the, the velocities or uh, the particles with higher velocities okay let us see the uh, particle accelerator uh, the cyclotron uh, the construction working and the basic principle all of them we will discuss now okay so it is cyclotron which we will be discussing now cyclotron okay right uh, as i say it is a machine which is used to accelerate positively charged particles to very high velocities very high velocities okay and now lorentz and uh, livingston are those two scientists who actually uh, designed this and uh, there is there is a basic principle with which the cyclotron work okay but uh, i just want to give you the construction working and all after i, I want to come to the uh, principle basic principle because the statement of basic principle is uh, needs little more explanation uh, because so I, I assume that uh, if you have good knowledge about the construction and working principle would become easy to understand okay right so now let us see how the cyclotron work okay the basic principle is cyclotron is designed on the basis of crossed fields okay the proper statement you will get to understand now later so it's basically designed in such a way that it uh, this, a cyclotron will have two d shaped metallic evacuated chambers okay hollow metallic and evacuated chambers okay uh, it's difficult for me to represent in 3d if i go for 3d representation then it would be difficult to represent the working okay so let me show you this is 1d d shaped metallic body okay hollow and evacuated okay the chamber is uh, uh, the, the air from the chamber is removed out okay and this is 1d shaped one so it consists of two of such kind of uh, d shaped chambers okay this is how we can imagine okay in in 3d so two d shaped uh, metallic chambers completely evacuated evacuated and hollow inside are kept 
in such a way that there exists a gap between them as shown in the diagram okay this gap is of uh, is is insulating these two which means the, the gap is avoiding them to uh, avoiding them from coming into contact so now uh, this this d shaped one uh, uh, charged uh, this shaped metallic plates are connected to a high frequency oscillator okay now the question that comes is what is this high frequency oscillator see uh, uh, since we have not yet come to the chapter of ac it's difficult for you to visualize the complete uh, detail but you assume this much this high frequency oscillator is such a device which is similar to battery okay which is very similar to a battery but in a battery positive terminal and negative terminal are fixed right when it comes to oscillator the positive terminal and the negative terminal are changed so many times every second okay so the positive becomes negative negative becomes positive positive becomes negative so they are changed they are oscillated what are oscillated the poles of the battery okay positive pole and negative pole are oscillated between the terminals which means if the situation is simply a battery this d okay and this uh, metallic chamber of d shaped uh, d shape is is named as d itself okay these two are called d's okay d's are the name of these these shapes so if this is the situation then this chamber is completely positively charged and permanently positively charged and this chamber is permanently negatively charged right but instead of a fixed battery okay, okay let us assume there is a battery itself but i hold the battery like this and i just change the terminals within a fraction of second from positive to negative and negative to positive i'll make this negative and i'll make this positive i changed it okay when i change the terminals now this d becomes negatively charged and this becomes positively charged right so assume this kind of change happening at least like okay at least like 50 times every second okay so positive to negative negative to positive positive to negative to 50 times every second so this kind of change or uh, uh, this kind of variation is somewhat like oscillation positive to negative negative to positive oscillation that is why this is called oscillator or high frequency oscillator okay what is oscillating here direction of current or current is oscillating okay or poles of the battery are oscillating that is how you can imagine okay so this is the symbol of that source of high frequency uh, uh, current or ac alternate current okay this itself is a alternate current we will discuss all the details in the chapter ac but for now you assume high frequency oscillator as such so that it can change the polarity of dc uh, so many times every second okay so now this is neither permanently positively charged this is neither negatively charged permanently but they change their polarity so many times every second okay clear right so this is the construction part now the particle which has to be accelerated will be produced here at point p in the diagram okay this is where we will produce the particle to accelerate okay and the entire setup of dc okay and the entire setup of dc are put horizontally on a plane and a strong magnetic field is applied perpendicular or normal to the dc or normal to the horizontal plane on which these dc are suspended or dc are kept so assume now the dc are kept in this plane so now we will apply a strong magnetic field like this normal to the horizontal plane on which the dc are kept okay Uh, the magnetic field can be either coming out of the board or going into the board uh, since the in the reference it is in uh, coming out of the board i'll choose the same one which means uh, this has a 
the entire setup of D's, both the D's has got magnetic field like this, okay. So, yeah, let me shift to 2D, okay. Now, since you have imagined how these look like, I will draw the 2D shape of them. Right. So, this is the first D and this is the second D, okay, 2D view like this. And now, we have magnetic field set in such a way that the field lines are coming out of the board. Okay, these are the magnetic field lines, dots. What does dot represent? Field lines coming out of the board, okay. And now, we will produce a charged particle here at point P, okay. This is the point P where we will produce the charged particle and now we need to accelerate this particle using this device. What is this device? Cyclotron. This itself is cyclotron metallic halo evacuated uh, chambers D's okay, kept in such a way that they are not in contact uh, as shown in the figure and the D's are connected to two terminals of a high frequency oscillator. The magnetic field is uh, and uh, these the, the D's are kept in a horizontal plane and the magnetic field is set in such a way that the field lines are normal to the plane in which the D's are kept. And the charged particles which has to be accelerated is produced at point P, okay, as shown in the diagram, clear. So, this D shall be named as D1 and this D shall be named as D2, okay. So, this is the construction part. And how do we produce this? We will keep a source of that. Say I need alpha particle here, then what should I do? I should keep a alpha source. Say I need a simple proton here, then what should I do? I should ionize hydrogen gas and leave the proton in, in to this part, okay. That is it, very simple. So, now coming to the construction, uh, coming to the working of cyclotron, okay. Whatever I explain now is the construction part. Now, coming to the working of cyclotron, okay, very interesting phenomena. See, here uh, let us assume that the, uh, the oscillator starts oscillating in such a way that D1 becomes positive first and D2 becomes negative, okay. They are cycles. When this is positive, this is negative. When this is positive, uh, D1, D2 is positive, D1 will be negative, okay. This is the situation. Now, this D1 is completely positive, D2 is completely negative and hence there will be an electric field in this direction, right. This is the direction of electric field set in this entire insulated region, right. In this entire region, we will have electric field set like this, right. For, for very short interval of time, but it will be like that. That makes, see here you have a positive charge and you, here you have electric field. What happens? This charged particle is, is will, will experience the force due to the electric field and will enter D2, okay, because electric field will push it to enter D2 and the particle enters D2, okay. Now the particle enters D2. When the particle enters D2, the electrostatic shielding effect will make the particle experience no electric field, which means the electric field is not set inside or the electric field cannot be seen inside the D's, but only in the 
space between the knees okay since they are metallic conductors electrostatic shielding effect will make the electric field disappear inside the disc right you remember electrostatic shielding okay so since they are metallic conductors now uh, metallic bodies there will be no electric field inside d2 neither inside d2 nor inside d1 but there will be electric field in this region in the insulated region so from here from the center till it enters into the d2 it is accelerated it is it the charged particle will experience force and it will it will enter d2 now once it enters d2 this has certain velocity in this direction the charged particle has certain velocity in this direction but along with this velocity it is also experiencing magnetic force because the field lines are like this magnetic field lines are also there and this metallic conductors sorry metallic blocks d1 d2 uh, chambers cannot block magnetic field lines it they can only block electric field lines because electrostatic shielding effect works but magnetic field lines will be there what do they do the magnetic field lines yeah obviously they cannot make the body go faster make the particle go faster but they can bend the particle's path right that is what these magnetic field lines will do so this is the direction of magnetic field okay field coming out of the board so it is v okay observe carefully v cross b going out now coming out of the board v cross b so v cross b the particle will be pushed down like this due to magnetic force inside d2 then what happens the particle takes a circular path right we know that very well when the particle is going with constant velocity and experiences a huge magnetic field it takes a circular path like this a small circular path since velocity is also less it will take very less uh, very small circular path and it will come out of d2 like this okay it will come out of d2 once it comes out of d2 okay next is the interesting phenomena that happens by the time the charged particle bend its way and come out of d2 what i'll do i'll change the polarity okay the oscillator uh, changes the polarity okay it is set in a way that the frequency of oscillation the angular frequency of the circular path is equal to frequency of oscillation okay that we'll discuss when it comes to math part for now see by the time it comes out of d2 and enters d1 i will change the polarity okay so after changing d1 becomes negative d2 becomes positive and now you see the electric field lines are in the opposite direction right so by the time this charged particle comes out of d2 it comes out and see that the field lines are changed they have changed their direction exactly opposite way and now this is a charged positively charged particle and this positively charged particle will be accelerated in the direction of electric field so that it is pushed again in this direction in this small part okay let me draw the small part here okay so initially it was at p and went inside took a circular path now it is coming out of it and it is accelerating because the field has changed and it will experience the force that's why so it it accelerates in this gap of d's and increases its velocity and enters d1 okay with higher velocity compared to this point by by the time it reaches this point it will have higher velocity and with higher velocity it enters d1 as and soon it enters d1 once again the electric effect is cut down no electric force right once because again shielding effect it's only magnetic force and now magnetic force makes the body okay so this is the direction of velocity right and b is out of the board so v cross b v cross b v cross b okay so this is the direction of magnetic force and hence with higher velocity it will take a it will again take a circular path of little larger radius because velocity is greater this time and hence the path will be 
of higher uh, larger radius it will go like this but the speed of entry into any d is equal to speed of exit okay speed of entry whatever the speed with which it enters is equal to the speed the same speed is maintained because we all know that it doesn't the magnetic field doesn't help the body to gain speed it only bends its direction and that is what is happening here it comes till this point and by the time it come out of d1 okay this is d1 this is d2 by the time it rotates and come out of d1 what i'll do i'll change the polarity again which means i'll make this positive and this negative and hence the field lines are again opposite so when it enters the gap again for the third time it will experience a force in its way or in the same direction with which it comes into the uh, into the gap right like this it is pushed again like this because the polarity is changed and the field lines are helping the particle to gain more velocity so during in the gap again the particle gains the velocity okay and enters d2 enters d2 with higher velocity because particle has gained the velocity now greater velocity more the circular path comes to this point bends polarity changes accelerates in the gap again takes the higher path accelerates takes the larger path accelerates 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 this kind of thousands and thousands of thousands of revolutions happens and after so many revolutions this will be provided with a window to go out when the radius achieved by the circular path is maximum with respect to the size of the cyclotron okay so when the size becomes maximum the particle will be shot out with a greater velocity in this direction clear so this is the working of the cyclotron clear this and the basic thing is the particle accelerates only in the intermediate space of d's right in the gap of d's and when it enters a d it it only takes a circular path the velocity or the speed is not changed when it is inside d when it comes to the gap the speed increases and enters the other d once again it comes round and once again it see that the polarity has changed and accelerates again okay this is the mechanism with which we are going to accelerate particles to very high velocities very very high velocities uh, and the device uh, the machine is called cyclotron why cyclotron because it is the cyclic approach chosen to accelerate the particle okay that is why cyclotron so now let us look into a little math part of this cyclotron yeah math part of cyclotron is somewhat similar to uh, the period of revolution of a charged body in the uh, in both uh, electric uh, in the magnetic field okay so we have discussed in the previous session about the motion of a charged particle when it enters the field enters the magnetic field perpendicular to it right so that it makes a circular path right in the previous session so there we derived the expression for frequency of uh, revolution and also the time period and then the angular frequency right so the expression for frequency of uh, <coughs> revolution was given by qb by 2 pi m right so the expression for new the frequency of revolution is given by qb by 2 pi m so if you observe carefully q is the charge b is the magnetic field m is the mass of the particle which is accelerating so none of the factors are changed during the acceleration of the particle right q remains same b remains same and m remains same we will not change any of them it's the same charged particle and same amount of magnetic field always kept so since this is the condition the path of the particle or radius of the particle 
uh, or uh, in other words it, it, it does not matter how large the circular path is the frequency will always be same right even if you take the expression for angular frequency it was simply q b by m right. So, angular frequency is number of uh, revolutions <coughs> per uh, uh, this is uh, frequency is number of revolutions per second right. So, now uh, this frequency is independent of the paths radius right the circular paths radius which means right from the beginning till the end till the end it the, the, the angular frequency or frequency of revolution is the same uh, which means if in the smaller radius okay in the smaller circle it was tracing say 5 revolutions in one second with the smaller radius and you you accelerate it and it takes the larger radius even when it is tra tracing larger circular paths even in that condition the angular frequency remains the same or the frequency of revolution remains the same which means it would still take 5 circles in 1 second ok. Even if it is in the small circle or in the large circle in a cyclotron the uh, number of revolutions taken per second remains the same ok which means frequency remains the same irrespective of the size of the circular path or irrespective of radius of the path we can say. So, that is a main advantage for, uh, uh, for us because now this frequency of the cyclotron or the frequency of moving charge should be equal to the frequency of oscillator right that is what the condition is. So, by the time it comes back ok we should change the polarity right. So, the condition is frequency of oscillation should be equal to uh, frequency of the uh, circular path should be equal to the frequency of the uh, given uh, high frequency oscillator <coughs> excuse me yeah that is it. Uh, so, this frequency should be equal to the frequency of the oscillator and yeah there is no derivation part in the for the board syllabus but these are the expressions which we have already derived and uh, I am just mentioning them. Uh, one more important factor is the maximum kinetic energy of the particle that comes out. For that we should get the expression for maximum velocity of the particle that comes out ok. Uh, what is the maximum velocity that we can achieve? If you are interested we can you can easily find it very easy you, we have already derived it ok. So, once again the same condition uh, the, the, the magnetic force here is providing the necessary centripetal force. What is magnetic force? QVB. Uh, centripetal force is mv square by r. So, V and V cancels uh, the general expression for V becomes equal to uh, QBR right QBR by m. Now, you see this is the velocity of particle with respect to certain radius which means lesser the radius lesser the velocity greater the radius greater the velocity inside the cyclotron. And in order to get the maximum velocity when we want to get the maximum velocity the radius should be maximum which means the radius of the path should be close to the radius of the cyclotron or radius of these ok because they, it cannot go out the radius is limited here it, the electrostatic shielding ends here. So, when r is equal to capital R which is radius of d's ok radius of d's then v becomes equal to v maximum. So, v maximum the maximum velocity that we can obtain using a cyclotron of radius capital R is given by q b capital R by m. Okay. And hence we can get the expression for maximum kinetic energy also half m v max squared that will give us the expression for kinetic energy ok. That is it that is about the cyclotron you should understand this working mechanism properly ok.
right